praying power like Lucy. Stick to the strip like movie. Never forget who I am. Proceed with sounds as groovy. This gangster. Like Easy E with a Uzi. All lies on me. Like. What's going on, y'all? Um, so, I'm back. And today, I want to do um, this video on the Christian mysteries. And uh, basically showing that there's a mystery system hidden within Christianity um, showing how um, showing how it's uh, directly manifested from the ancient Egyptian mysteries um, and connected with other things as well that stems from that root um, so that's what I'm um, trying to do today I uh, hope you enjoy this video um, I just jotted down some notes um, I don't know exactly uh, like you know how I'm gonna formulate it or nothing like that it's just um, I'm gonna try my best and I hope it goes well to get this information out so the first thing I want to do is um, I want to read this uh, is from the book um, written by Manly P. Hall and it's Melchizedek and the Mystery of the Fire and I want to read this um, today the great faith of the white race Christianity is served by a great number of honest sincere devout men and women who while devoted to their tasks are only partly efficient in it because the majority of them are totally ignorant of the fact that the so-called biblical Christianity is allegory concerning the true spirit of Christianity and the esoteric doctrine involved in the temple by the initiated minds of pagandom the promulgated and promulgated to serve the religious needs of the human race today this great faith is served by millions and understood only by a handful while the mystery temple no longer exists as an, as an institution on the corners of the streets as it did in the ancient world, the mystery school still exists as an invisible philosophical structure. It admits into the knowledge of its secrets only a few, permitting the great mass to enter only the outer courtyard and make its offering upon the brazen altar. Christianity is essentially a mystery school but most of its adherents do not understand it well enough to realize that there are secrets concealed behind the parables and allegories which are so important a part of its dogma. Why should Christianity not be a mystery school? Its founder was an, was an initiate of the Essene mysteries. The Essenes were disciples of the great Pythagoras and were also connected with the secret schools of India. The Master Jesus was himself in Hierophant, deeply versed in the ancient Arcanum. St. John, by his writings, proves himself to be acquainted with the ritualism of the Egyptian cult, and it is contended that St. Matthew, St. Matthew was the teacher of, I can't pronounce this, Basilides, the immortal Egyptian sage co-founder with Simon Magus of Gnosticism or Gnosticism however you pronounce that um making sure I was still recording okay so the most elaborate system of Christian the most elaborate system of Christian mysticism that has ever evolved from the main stem of St. Peter's Church during its early history in Rome, Christianity was in constant contact with Mithraism, the fire philosophy of Persia, from which it borrowed no small part of its rituals and ceremonies. So here, Manly P. Hall states that Christianity had, is a mystery school, it has a mystery system, and it, um, it extracted knowledge from Persia, from the Mith Mithraism, or the Mithras, Mithras system and from India and he also stated that Gnostic or Gnosticism was the most elaborate um, version of Christianity 
and all of the thing, all of these Gnosticism, India, Persia is all rooted in ancient Egypt. Okay, so so I'm gonna briefly go through my notes here and um and just uh try my best to explain uh what's going on in uh in in the Christian mystery. So uh basically I got these I jotted down these notes from Pistis Sophia. And basically Pistis Sophia is power and wisdom. Pistis is power, Sophia is wisdom. And um basically what it is is that um all the characters inside of the Bible are basically with inside of yourself and um, these are virtues and attributes of you that you must um, that you must unlock inside of yourself and to um, and basically to uh, understand this great mystery so um, the Pista Sophia um, it's it's a pretty um, what I want to say, it's, you know, it's allegorical, it's, you know, it's, it's written in a way, um, it's not a very, very old book, but it's, it's basically, um, teachings of Jesus after he rose, um, a after he was resurrected, and this is what he taught his disciples after he resurrected. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to briefly go through the notes that I jotted down from the first book of the uh, Pista Sophia. So they say the fourth and the twentieth mystery is revealed in the sixth mystery. So the fourth and the twentieth mystery is something that's um, related to the Zodiac. And the sixth mystery is a sexual mi mystery. Okay. Um. So the first mystery is the mystery of the Father and the Son are one. Those who know the Son knows the Father. So the mystery of the Father is, um, the Father is, first thing you must remember is that all of these things is always within inside of you. And these are different aspects of your personality, different aspects of your spirit, different aspects of yourself, okay? Um... So the mystery of the Father is, is that the Father is your divine spirit. It's your uh, immortal soul. It's your more immortal spirit, your immortal soul, which is Osiris or Asar. Okay? That's your divine spirit. And um, so that's, that's related to... Um, that's related to, of course, the Heru or the Horus. OK, because once you unlock, once you unlock or unleash um, the inner Christ within yourself or the inner Heru within yourself, it's through acknowledgement of the immortal soul. It's through the mystery of the father. OK, so they also talk about five impressions of the great light, the esoteric pentagram. And the pentagram is represented by a flaming star. And it's um, and it's uh, correlated with the five help helpers contained within the flaming star, which is Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Michael, and Sam Samuel. So um, these are all aspects inside of you, inside of the human being. And dealing with the pentagram. Uh, it must be composed of seven metals, silver, mercury, copper, gold, iron, tin, and lead. So when the star is facing up, when the star is facing upwards, it makes demons scatter. So when the pentagram is facing upwards, it symbolizes something um, angelic. It symbolizes something holy. It symbolizes godly. When the pentagram is facing downwards, and you see uh, like the horns of the goat, you know how the horns of the goat is this way and the top of the star is down. That symbolizes demonic energy 
that symbolizes, you know, or what you want to call the devil. Um, so that's what it means here inside of this uh, mystery system of Christianity, Gnosticism or Gnosticism. So, um, so what all of this is about is about um, unleashing Christ within yourself. Th that's the goal. Okay, that's the goal. And that's uh, directly related to the ancient, um, the ancient Egyptian mystery of the seven aspects of the soul. Okay, um, and you can learn all about uh, the Egyptian mysteries just from reading the Book of the Dead, the Book of Coming Forth by Day, because they're talking about um, the immortality of the soul. Okay, so, so how to unleash the Christ within you here in this system of Gnosticism they say is through the sexual sperm, the sexual transmutation um, and they say that um, prejudgments and fears prejudgment and fears constitute obstacles okay so you know there are things or certain psychological defects that will prevent a person from releasing um, the Christ within himself. And what they call the Hermes glass is directly, um, directly connected with the feminine yoni. So um, Hermes is, is connected to Mercury. And Hermes is connected to to who? Well, Hermes is to Hootie. Okay, um, Hermes is to Hootie, but they just renamed him in the Hellenistic world. And when the Romans got a hold to it, they named it Mercury. So when the when the sexual energy is transmutated, it releases Mercury. It releases the Mercury inside of the person. Okay, and you know Tahuti deals with divine thought, divine speech, and all of these things. So this is a way to unlock that aspect within inside of the person. And this is the gateway. This is this is the the the, the alchemy to release the inner Christ. I feel like my battery about to die, so I gotta uh, try to get through this. So the nectar of immortality is contained within the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail was the feminine sexual yoni. So, you know, um, you need a woman to do this work. You know, you need a woman to do this work. Basically, that's, that's what they're saying. So, you got three forces. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And, um, which is positive, negative, and neutral force. And the three powers must connect at a point. So, the three forces... Is symbolized by a triangle, <coughs> which is neutral at the top, and positive and negative is at the bottom. And you know, so that's dealing with uh, what you call hermeticism or the emerald tablet, and also the Kabbalah, because the goal is to um, the goal is to balance the forces. You know, the goal is to balance the forces and to stay, you know perfectly in the middle, not to go too far to the left, not to go too far to the right, basically. So, you know, when you when you when you are releasing the Christ within or the Heru within, this is called the Philosopher's Stone. Okay, and this is the resurrected king within us. Only resurrected masters possess the treasury of light. So this is dealing with the Philosopher's Stone. So you got eight guards, you got eight, well you got, you got guards, you got nine guards that guards the temple, and they always guard the treasury of light. So, so, so in the Kabbalah, um, it talks about the Sephiroth which is the tree of life and in, in the tree of life you have ten sephiroth and ten sephiroth 
basically deals with the zodiac and their different regions and their different um, psychological aspects with inside of you, right? And so um, they're saying that um, Tifereth is the twin savior, um, the casual man. This is the logo, the Christ manifested. So this is this is with inside the region of Tifereth, which is um, basically uh, uh, basically uh, the definition of Tifereth is beauty. Okay, so so the three primary forces must be crystallized within inside the human being. So I went through that. So the mystery of Shakma, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Hakma or Shakma. So this is another um, Sephiroth of the Tree of Life inside of the Kabbalah. And uh, Shakma or Hakma, um, that is uh, basically wisdom. And it says wisdom or Shakma corresponds to the ninth hour for the resurrected. Resurrected of Christ within is in the eighth hour. Twelve hours of Apollo Apolloness are related to the twelve works of Hercules. So, we know that we're dealing with um, a Greek form of thought. But we know that this Greek form of thought is basically all of the science from ancient Egypt. You know, from, from Africa. So, the twelve hours of Apollonis... I'm thinking that that's the 12 hours um, of the sun once it goes to the underworld and before it rises again. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit are the three log logoic aspects. The triple world of the logos is the glory of Azaluth, derived from the old omnipresent and active I believe this is Odandaboth or Idandaboth, the um, uh, the Greek demiurge, eternal breath, profoundly unknowable within the sacred absolute sun. So some of this stuff I don't really understand all of that much, but a lot of it I do. Some of it I don't. You know, I'm going to just be honest with you. And um, but the Azaluth, there are three or four worlds dealing with the Kabbalah. And I'll explain that to you now. Right. So Azaluth is nothingness. Bria is something is something from nothing. Then Yetzara is something from something. And Asaya is it's completion. So these are different regions of um, different regions of denser levels of uh, manifestation. So the highest level is basically nothing. Then as you go to which is absolute, then when you go to Bria, it's beginning is matter beginning to take shape and begin to form. And you get to Yetzara then it's even more, then you get to Asaya, then it's completion, it's actually in the physical world. So, so they said that Atzaluth, the triple, the triple worlds of the Logos is the glory of Atzaluth. So it's basically saying that the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost um, is the glory of Atzaluth. So fear must be radically eliminated from our nature. The existence of fear is impossible in the Logos. Fear serves a base for many errors. Okay, so that goes back to the psychological errors that I was talking about that must be eradicated if you are going to uh, release the Christ within. Osiris, the dark God. Christ. Dark for human beings, people not compatible of enduring the light, glory, light of the Christ dazzles the dwellers of the earth. People can't comprehend 
splendors of the Christ. Okay? So, they're basically saying that the Osiris in Christ is, is basically connected. And the Osiris is the mystery of the Father because the Osiris is your immortal soul. And the Christ is releasing that immortal soul to take over your vessel. Ego keeps consciousness sleep. Annihilating ego awakenings occur. Only awaken can understand Christic mysteries. Christ is a force and electricity as gravity. Christ expresses his self through anyone perfectly prepared. Earthquakes, confusion accompany Christic events. Christic events is terribly revolutionary. Bethlehem is the physical body of the initiate. The Jesus Christ must eliminate all undesirable elements we carry within our interior. The Lord doesn't have the Lord doesn't hide anything from those who are truly awakened. So they state Osiris is the dark god. So we have the Christ and Osiris connection here again. Human beings are not capable of enduring the light, the glory, because Christ dazzles the dwellers of the earth. People can't comprehend the splendors of Christ. All right? So basically they're saying Christ or Osiris is dark for the people. But we know um, that Osiris was dark because he was formulated in the image of the people that created him. You understand what I'm saying? But this is what they state here in their literature. Um, Christ is a force as electricity, as gravity. Um, Christ expresses himself through anyone perfectly prepared. Earthquakes, confusion, accompany Christic events. Christic events is terribly revolutionary, is what they state. Bethlehem is the physical body of the initiate. Of the initiate. Jesus Christ must eliminate all undesirable elements we carry within our interior. The Lord doesn't hide anything from those who are truly awakened. There are many who presume that they are adepts of perfection. So it states, be aware of false prophets. <clears throat> so the 12 apostles, um, the 12 apostles are 12 powers within us. Um, 12 anonymous parts of our being and they state that make a clear differentiation between 12 powers and 12 faculties <laughs> I know I said that kind of um, so we must eradicate the inhumane elements that we, that we carry within our interior the degree of Ishmek perfects the highest part of the being James is Mercury within each of us. What is what is related to the Philosopher's Stone and is what is related to um, to Hudi and Hermes. Okay, so it states that James is Mercury within within us. See, because like I said before, these these characters are attributes within inside of ourselves that we must. Um, that we must get in tune with and we must uh, unlock. We must unlock these uh, psychological, um, these, uh, these psychological um, characters inside of our mind to become the full, whole, hey, rule, uh, Christ being. Gabriel, he's a region of the moon related to the lunar sphere which is connected to Tahuti also. The great IAO is the power from the logos itself. The little IAO is the power from within the human being. So that's the universe and the human connection again. Um, you know, of course we are made in the image of the universe. We are the small universe. You understand what I'm saying? So. Every initiate must encounter the part of his being which is called John the Baptizer. 
that takes place within the second initiation of fire that takes place in Eden. John is the precursor who prepares the path for our intimate Christ, right? So in order to in order to fully understand that mystery, you will have to go to the scriptures and you have to read upon John and you will have to look at it esoterically and the, and you will have to um and you will have to incorporate you will have to incorporate that um that attribute with inside of yourself because they state that that's the precursor to to the Christ. Mary is Isis. Okay? So there we go again with the Egyptian connection. The Kemet connection. Mary is Isis. The veil that no man has lifted, the divine mother, Mary Isis, receives first power, holy affirmation. Okay? So a good book that can help you kind of understand what all of this is about is um, the her the comedic tree of life. So in that book, um, he he gives a breakdown of the Anuni and Thergy, and every every netter is a level of consciousness that needs to be obtained. So this is the same thing that's going on here within the Christian mysteries is that. Every <clears throat> every character is an attribute, is a level that needs to be attained to reach the most highest level. Jehovah, the host who created the universe, the universe, Sabbath, the good, <clears throat> the host of the Creator, Elohim. All right. So when you um, when you awaken the Christ within. The accomplishment is called the great work and it's symbolized uh, by the divine purple. Um, I need to find out more information on that, but I just thought it was interesting to know. <clears throat> and they also said um, it's just like this cold word. This lang I don't even know what language this is, but I need to do more research on this. Um, and you all can do it as well. Uh, they said this is the language of the light. And it's Zama, Zama, Aza, Rachma, Aza. I don't know what that means. I don't know where it comes from. But it's supposed to be the language of the light. And the esoteric interpretation of the Pista Sophia. <clears throat> um, um, it's the Pista Sophia. Um, interpreted by Samael Weon or something close to that. Um, all of the mysteries have arisen by the will of the Father who is in secret. So again, that's Asar, that's Osiris, the immortal soul, our immortal soul that doesn't die. That's the mystery is to awaken the immortal soul. All that takes place within the universe also takes place with inside of the human being. We discussed that. <clears throat> the great breath, three primary forces, sacred absolute sun, and the end of the great day, it is reabsorbed in the sacred absolute sun. So they talk about the ancient of days. So the ancient of days <clears throat> is a sar. It is the father. It is the immortal aspect of your soul. Okay, um, it must be searched for within the last limits of ourselves. He is the last mystery. He is the superior part of our being. <clears throat> so this is the immortal aspect of your soul <clears throat> that is connected to the almighty um, superior force that creates everything in the universe. So the last limit, cosmic manifestation. Being is unlimited beyond cosmic manifestation. So the whole point is to rise to the highest limit um, beyond cosmic manifestation or up to that point to where um, to that to that realm where um, everything evolves from. So we talked about. <clears throat> 
the immortal aspect of the soul, which is the father mystery, <clears throat> which is also referred to as the ancient of days. This is the Lux Occulta. So Lux <clears throat> or Lux in uh, Latin, which is uh, the Roman language, <clears throat> means light. So uh, on hieroglyph of the Ra, hieroglyph, which is the sun, it is a circle with a dot in the middle. And this is also a, um, it also has been taken uh, symbolically in uh, different schools of thought. <clears throat> and in here, in this school of thought, um, they're saying that a sar or your immortal aspect of the soul is the dot within the circle. <clears throat> And it says the concealed intelligence shines in the glory of Azaluth. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we describe Azaluth and we describe um, the different realms, okay, as it pertains to Azaluth. So the Holy Spirit is the revealer, the illuminator, which is Kundalini. <clears throat> Kundalini, the Holy Spirit. Okay, the cosmic mother, Isis, the divine mother, is the Holy Spirit within us. So the five helpers, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Samuel, <clears throat> and the other one I forgot, if that wasn't five. The five helpers exist in the universe <clears throat> and, in, and inside of our being and in guides the initiate under the supreme direction of the Father. So again, all of these aspects and these divine attributes is a part of us. And these is different aspects of ourselves that needs to be awakened. <clears throat> so the treasury of light, that, this, is, um, this is what's possessed by <clears throat> the Heru or the Christ, the person who awakens, um, who does the great work and awakens the Christ consciousness or the Heru consciousness. So, of course, I talked about the nine guards of the uh, great treasury of light. They are self-independent and self-conscious parts of our own being. <clears throat> so we got aspects of ourself. <coughs> They don't want to die or be eradicated. <clears throat> okay, they don't want to die and be eradicated. Um, they are alive. They are a different version of our of ourselves. <coughs> mm -mm -mm. Different versions of ourselves. They don't want to be eradicated, and they want to try to prevent us, prevent ourselves from reaching from reaching this state of consciousness, from reaching this state of being. Okay, um, so those are the nine guards. Uh, I spoke about that. <clears throat> so you have the ninth path, pure intelligence. This is um, found in uh, Yesod, foundation of the great work, which is the sex sexual organs. <clears throat> the secret name of the ninth path is Shaddai El Shai. Shaddai El Shai in the ninth spear. Okay, so <clears throat> in in Kabbalah, so this is the Kabbalah, um, the Tree of Life, the Sefer Yetzirah. So at the bottom you have Melku, then you have Nezat, then you got Hot. Then you got Tifereth, then you got um, Chizid, and you got Givora, and you got Bina, you got Hakma, and you got Keter. So you got <clears throat> the Kingdom, Foundation, um, Splendor, victory, beauty, um, love, sh strength, <coughs> understanding, wisdom, and crown. 
So basically what you're looking at, <clears throat> you're looking at the universe, our, uni our, uni our solar system. You're looking at the um, <clears throat> zodiac. You're also looking at psychological aspects of yourself. <clears throat> okay, and these are all incorporated inside of us. And you're also looking at different regions. Okay, uh, similar to the chakra system. And, you know, you rise from different regions until you reach the top. <clears throat> And the Hebrew language is also uh, connected with the Sefer Yetzirah. Okay, you got ten, you got ten spheres <clears throat> and twenty-two paths that corresponds to the twenty-two letters. <clears throat> so I just wanted to show y'all that. <clears throat> Man, my throat is bothering me. So I just wanted to show y'all that. All right. Um, so the adept. You must rise up to the most to the midst of the tyrants of the rulers of the twelve aeons with the vesture of light most exceedingly. Twelve aeons oppose those who march towards the final liberation. <clears throat> so I just showed you one representation of that, which is the Sefer Yetzera. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, just going through my notes, also, the triangle is symbolized by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is also positive, negative, and neutral. The square is symbolized by upright behavior, and the octagon is symbolized by eight initiations. So, it is stated that the sage must work within the light and dark of his own being. So the light and darkness are opposed, but complement each other. So you can learn about, <clears throat> I should have brought the, I should have brought that book. So you can learn about, more about that within the Emerald Tablet. Okay. Um, and that book uh, just breaks it down. The Hermetic Laws. Um, you know, you have to understand that. <clears throat> if you're going to like. You got to understand that if you're going to just <clears throat> be dealing with any occult information, period. Um, so when a psychological defect is disintegrated, it is replaced by a virtue, a power, a force, crystallized within our own personality. So as we begin, <clears throat> so as we begin to better ourselves, as we begin to strengthen our mind, as we begin to... Um, you know, as we begin to uh, correct these psychological defects, we begin to add on positive aspects, okay? And to do this, you're going to have to work with meditation and work with the Kundalini, okay? This is the best way, uh, one of the best ways to get that work done. So the 12 aeons within us are the 12 zodiac orders and it is stated here um, <clears throat> within this esoteric interpretation it is stated that Leo is the most exalted among the 12 orders <clears throat> and it says according to um, as it refers to the Sefer Yetzera, that uh, Keter, Hakma, and Bina are the lions of fire, the true dragons of wisdom. So this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is the most uh, upper triangle of the uh, Sefer Yetzera, which is uh, the crown, understanding, and wisdom. And this is, uh, you know, this is what give rise to the lower Sephiroth. <clears throat> so, so basically, um, the ten Sephiroth plus Ainsof and Ainsof Or, these make up the twelve regions, the twelve aeons. But there's a thirteenth aeon, which is above which is above the 12 which which is above the 12 orders 
And the thirteenth eon is uh, stated is terribly divine. <sighs> so all works within light or darkness must be performed within triangles, octagons, and squares. We must clothe ourselves with the boots of Mercury. So that goes back to Tehuti, that goes back to Hermes, okay? And it is stated that in order to um, in order to release the mercury is to work with the sexual alchemy. <clears throat> so the thirteenth the thirteenth aeon is connected with the thirteen heavens of the Aztecs. Uh, and the thirteen tombs among the Maya, Mayas and it was stated that it was 13 periods of time for each human race and they're saying that we are approaching the 13th Katoom if I'm saying that right it's K-A-T-U-N and they're saying we are approaching the 13th one uh, it should be between 2040 and 2043 so we described that um, the Sefer Yetzirah and the Zodiac is basically connected <clears throat> right so the pistis sophia the power wisdom um this is found in the 13th sphere the 13th aeon from the eternal fire is within the christ right so this is this is a this is a deep aspect within our soul within our spirit So <clears throat> this is going back to some more Roman stuff. Uh, Eros, E R O S, and Cupid <clears throat> is symbolizes by fornication, adultery, and sexual abuse. And then it's stated that these afflict the most damage on the Pistis Sophia. This is the highest aspect of our soul. This is the power of wisdom, and it is stated that these things afflict the most damage. <clears throat> On Pista Sophia. So the Pista Sophia, the power of wisdom, is made flesh <clears throat> within the incarnated gods. Glorious shines within the fourth and the twentieth mystery. I haven't figured out what the fourth and twentieth mystery is exactly yet, <clears throat> because I only read book one of the Pista Sophia, and they may describe it later in the book. Um, and maybe I'll do some more um, episodes of this but I know it's related to the Zodiac and the 4 and 20th mystery is hidden in the loom of the gods only by way of the 6th mystery and the 6th mystery is the sexual transmutation so somehow that's connected but the only way to it is to work that uh, alchemy um, through the sexual energy now this is really interesting. They stated that <clears throat> they stated that the solar creatures converted into lunar creatures and became vulgar beings of the earth. The the fallen gods converted to lunar creatures and lost their powers. This is the occult purpose of the Sabbath. So that's deep right there. <clears throat> that's deep. That's deep. Only within the power of the 13th eon do the fallen gods become again solar. Okay? <clears throat> so only through working this great work um, that I'm describing here in this video is how you become again solar. Alright? And let me see. So, um, <clears throat> so that's very, very, you know what, I ain't, ain't going to say very similar. So you can understand that that's coming out of the Book of the Dead, um, the Book of Coming Forth by Day, and the Seven Aspects of the Soul, in the Ancient Egyptian Mysteries. <clears throat> we must evoke Isis. So here we have Christian mysticism. Uh, Christian mysteries and we're talking about Isis and we're talking about Osiris so this is what I've been trying to explain to people um, that 
these religions has an origin and these religions are <clears throat> basically no different from the old okay but this stuff has been hidden only for um the select few and even today even though that even though that the information is out in the open it's still the only for a select few because only so many people is really going to uh take heed to it uh, you know only only a certain group of people is going to take heed to it even even though we sit here <clears throat> talking about this stuff only a few of you is going to uh be like you know what it's something with that some of you people i mean i get people telling me i don't know what i'm talking about saying i'm uh basing opinion I don't base opinions and I don't base opinions. I just I'm here to search the facts. I love the truth. Like I don't So, you know, some people just don't like what I'm talking about. So if you don't like what I'm talking about, don't watch it. Like go do something that you like. I don't understand it. That's kinda retarded. I guess a lot of people are retarded. Um so <clears throat> Now this is where it gets um, different from people who's not used to this. Um, so you must evoke the serpent of the ninth sphere, the divine mother Kundalini, reinforce sexual power. <clears throat> Gods are redeemed if they will work in the ninth sphere. So you must work with this sexual energy. You must um, have sexual pur purity. <coughs> And you must perform a sexual alchemy. Okay? And, you know, um, and I'm pretty sure all of you guys have a, a idea on how to raise Kundalini energy. So, I don't think I have to go into that. Thirteenth Eon, Death of the Ego. When angels fornicate, they fall and then the ego resurrects. So, even if you're doing this work... Even if you're doing this work, if you fall off, then the ego can resurrect, you know, so it is what it is. Karma, a Sanskrit word, which means cause and effect. When you perform good deeds, good deeds pay debts. <clears throat> so basically, if you did things in your past you have to repay them you have to do something you have to level it out that goes back to um the way of the heart okay the way of the heart in ancient egypt <clears throat> so you got the red demons of set anger greed lust envy pride laziness gluttony these must be annihilated to liberate the consciousness to radically awaken the divine mother kundalini isis evoking ev evoke during sex she can dis she can disintegrate any psychological defects. So then again, working this sexual alchemy is how to purify oneself. Okay, this is how you liberate the power. This is what this is the main ingredient that they describe in, inside of this thing is the sexual alchemy. So they say. Y E W, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm just going to spell it. <clears throat> y E W is a sacred name, the magic key to the light and clairvoyance. The great work combines salt, surfer, sulfur, and mercury to, um, into, into the great order of Melchizedek. So the great work, you must combine salt, sulfur, and mercury. I haven't totally figured that out yet. We can get back to that later, but we know what mercury is. But we got to figure out what salt and sulfur, because sulfur, because of course we know it's going to be a symbolic, esoteric interpretation. Minerals. So the treasury of light, <clears throat> the secret names, is three gates to the treasury of light, which is... The Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. The Son is a Aheye. Aheye is the Son. Yod Hey Vav Hey is the Father. And Yod Hey Vav A Hey Elohim is the Holy Spirit. Um Elohim's is just God and goddesses. <clears throat> now this is real interesting. 
So they spell Elohim also with an A. But this Elohim spelled with the A is higher than the Elohim. And I connected this with Noon because they said that this is the invisible, abstract, absolute space, unmanifested one. So this is the most highest being. <clears throat> and if you study ancient Egypt, you will see Noon. And Noon is the primordial waters that <clears throat> everything manifested from. So uh, the 13th gate is absolute perfection. Christ the adept has has infinite gates open to the firmament and pass beyond our galaxy. So that's this this is what this is all about to initiate and awaken the immortal soul so you can roam freely throughout the galaxy, roam to the higher aspects. <clears throat> so the intimate Christ, this is what they call um uh, Christ being awakened with inside of you, they call it the intimate Christ. It's 100% revolutionary. He's the great liberator. So we must work on ourselves to reach the Christification, the interior of the interior, the logos. So it was said inside of the Pista Sophia that Christ had 8,700 amirs of light. And 8 plus 7 is 15, and 1 plus 5 is 6. So six is the lover. That's that's the sixth mystery. <clears throat> and the fifteenth arcanum is connected with the bafflement, the sexual transmutation, the light born from darkness, the cosmos spark, sprouts from chaos. So that goes back to the sexual alchemy. This is what this is all about: the sexual alchemy to awaking. The higher spiritual aspects through sexual purity and also working the sexual alchemy with your Mary Magdalene. Okay? That's what this is about. And this is something I want to show y'all because <clears throat> within working the sexual alchemy, you are um, controlling the lower aspect. You are not being controlled by the devil, but you are controlling the devil. Okay, so um, um, <clears throat> you're still in the fire. You are still in the fire. Um, and this is something I want to show y'all. So you see Heyru here. And you see what he's standing on. Okay? You see him standing on top of the lower nature. So, I'm just bringing the information forth. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. That's for you to decide. I'm not saying I practice it. I'm not saying this is the true religion. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just bringing what this is. So you're going to have to pay for them or you're going to have to sell them. Either way it go, you know. So Mary Magdalene is the repentant sinner. Man needs in order to work within the ninth spirit. So I talked about that. You need the Mary Magdalene. You have to <clears throat> work, uh, work with the sexual alchemy. Um, so basically this is all this is about is that, um, having sex without spilling the sperm, mercury ascends through the spinal medullar ca uh, canal, opening centers and revolutionizing the consciousness, building the astral body, building the mental body, building the casual body. The Holy Spirit crystallized within us. So surrender to the divine will of the Father, which is our immortal soul, our Osiris. And that brings out the Pistis Sophia, the power of wisdom. So that's it. I didn't expect this video to be this long. <clears throat> I really didn't. But like I said, um... So that's the Christian mystery. Um, it's all about the esoteric interpretations, realizing that these attributes is to be awakened with inside of yourself, 
to make you become the highly evolved being. Okay? Um, and another thing is important to understand is that um, each of these characters um, within the Christian mystery is directly associated with an uh, ancient Kemet um, deity. That's just the absolute truth because <clears throat> the Christian mysteries is set up to emulate the ancient mystery because this is what the ancient mystery was about. It was about bringing about Heru consciousness. <clears throat> if you had this knowledge back then, it was for you to awaken the higher aspects of the soul so you can build the astral body and um, awaken the immortal soul and travel throughout the universe. That's what it's about. So before I go, I'm going to show you all this book, which I think is a pretty good book. And what I really like about this book, it has, um, it's a great book, it has you know, good pictures. I like to have pictures when, when I'm reading information on ancient Egypt. <coughs> because the artwork is, is so symbolic and it's just, you know, it's a mystery behind it. You know what I mean? I can't wait till I uh, go see this stuff in person. So that's it, I'm done. Um, I just wanted to bring some of that information forth. Um, I maybe do a, a part two, part two and part three to this. Um, but like I said, you know, if you don't like what's being said here, go watch something that makes you feel good. Go watch something that you like being said. Um, you know, people like to leave their vulgar comments on my on my page. <clears throat> and then I go see their page and they basically just made a page just to make a vulgar comment on my video. Like they don't got nothing on their page. They don't show their picture. You know what I'm saying? So I guess I just come along with the come along with the game. You know what I'm saying? But uh su subscribe to my channel. Um Till we meet again, peace, love, and light. Peace. Brain power like Lucy, stick to the strip like movie. Never forget who I am, proceed with sounds as groovy. This gangster, like Easy E with a Uzi, all eyes on me. Like